Paleo Hackers, welcome back to this week's call. Very excited with me on the other end. My guest is Dr. Josh Axe. He is a certified doctor of natural medicine, radio show host, and worked at the 2012 Olympic Games in London with the USA team athletes. Uh, Dr. Axe travels the world speaking on superfoods, nutrition, and fitness with his new book coming out called Eat Dirt. Why leaky gut may be the root cause of your health problems and five surprising steps to cure it. So, Dr. Dr. Axe, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to uh, to be here. I was on your YouTube channel, and uh, you do a great job, man, of, of breaking down really complex topics into uh, simple kind of layman's terms for everyone at home. I mean, that's a... That's a skill because that's not you still keep the integrity of the information. It's not oversimplified. So really cool stuff over there. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, I mean, I love YouTube, love doing videos. And, you know, I think a lot of that comes from uh, having a clinical practice and talking with patients one on one for, uh, for for years. Is that your favorite medium? Do you think doing the videos? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I really do love video. Um, I, uh, I mean, now I obviously, if if you've been to my website, I I write pretty often as well, and and do um, do a lot of other things. But yeah, I mean, I I love video. I love being able to connect with uh, viewers and people kind of one on one. So yeah, it's a blast. Yeah, you're a busy guy. You got all three. You got the video, podcast, and YouTube, and a new book coming out, which we'll we're gonna get to. Um, but I'm really curious, kind of your story and how you got into health and wellness and and why you're so passionate about natural health specifically. Well, sure. Well, you know, for for myself growing up, and and, and I I find this in a lot of the interviews I do, a lot of people get into the health field because a crisis in their own family. And it was no different, no different with me growing up. Um, uh, you know, our family was always into sort of health and fitness. We were in a lot of sports and, and, and different activities like that. And, uh, but but at 40 years old, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, which was crazy for our family because my mom was she was actually my gym teacher in elementary school. She was a huh. swim instructor. You know, she was she was really fit and active. But 40 years old, diagnosed with cancer, and at the time, my family lived in what I call today the the medical model. So when I was sick as a kid, we immediately got put on antibiotics. She was always taking medications, and that we, we never did anything with nutrition. I mean that we didn't even realize that was a thing. And so when she got her diagnosis, she went through all the traditional medical treatment. She went and had uh, a mastectomy. She went through rounds and rounds and rounds of chemotherapy. And I can still remember to this day uh, seeing her hair fall out. I remember looking Mm -hmm. at her after her chemo treatments and thinking she had aged 20 years in two weeks and just saying to myself, you know, I never want to see anyone have to go through that again. Yeah. And that's really one of the things that drove me into becoming a physician. But, you know, when she was diagnosed as cancer free after her treatments, we thought, okay, we're home free now. She's good. But really, for the next 10 years after chemo, she was sicker than ever. She spent probably half her days in bed. Uh, she struggled with chronic fatigue, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, got put on three medications, including an antidepressant, struggled with major digestive issues like constipation. And she was just sick and tired all the time for 10 years. And after 10 years, I, I got a call from her. And at this point, I was actually living in Orlando, Florida. I was in school to become a doctor and working as a nutritionist during that time. And she calls me in tears and says, hey, Josh, I've just been diagnosed with cancer again. Um, they they want to go in and start doing radiation and surgery. What do I do? And I said, Mom, I'll be home. I got on a plane, flew home. And we just we prayed together. We talked together. And she was just really feeling led. And so was I to take care of her all naturally uh, because of what I was learning at the time. And so we decided before we went and did anything else to just create create a radically different diet and lifestyle for her. And so she started juicing vegetables every day. We started doing uh, bone broth soup. We, she started doing blueberries and wild-caught salmon and just, just eating a per- Perfect out. She started supplementing with something called SBO, soil-based probiotics, and hmm. and certain types of uh, medicinal mushrooms, and uh, using frankincense oil, and just just many different things she, we did on the supplement side, and and also she reduced stress. That was the other thing. I mean, we really uh, she she was working full time as a teacher, teaching special ed, very stressful, yeah. and she dropped down to part time, and and we just made radical changes, and we followed. She followed this program that I laid out for her. And after two weeks, she really started noticing a difference in her energy levels. But we went back to the oncologist after four months. 
and we get a call from him, and he said, he said, this is a. Uh, he, he said something like, this is, I've never seen this before. He said, this is, this is not common, is what he said. This is not common. Um, he said, but the tumors from the CT scan are showing that, that they've shrunk in half. And he said, I, I don't know what you're doing. He said, but go ahead and keep doing it and come back in about 9 to 12 months. And she went back later at that point, almost complete remission. And today, uh, my mom is in the best shape of her life. She's in her mid-60s. She says she feels better now in her 60s than she did in her 30s. And she's cancer-free. <laughs> uh, she got off all of her medications. Her thyroid's functioning normally, normally perfect digestion. And... Um, I think I mentioned she, her and my dad retired from uh, Ohio down to Florida. She's ran two 5Ks with me in the past couple years and hmm. finished second and third in her age group and just has incredible health. And so, you know, really one of the things that uh, I tell my patients, uh, Clark, every single time I see them is that, you know what, well, I'm going to take care of you like my own mom and my own family member. And so, you know, I think that that's one of the things that I really try and do as well is I, I think... When my mom went through that, she was almost paralyzed uh, in decision making. I mean, it's overwhelming when somebody gets a gets a diagnosis like that. So I realized with my mom, like I made my mom her own, you know, little cookbook with recipes to follow. And I brought my mom. Uh, actually, I went into her house and threw away, you know, half of what, what was in our pantry and refrigerator at the time. And I went shopping with her to Whole Foods and showed her what to buy. And hmm. you know, and, and so and, and I found that that's how really how patients want to respond. We live in a world today that is so busy, so overwhelming, and so stressful that I try and give my patients today or online readers every step of what they need to do. So not just tell them, hey, you know, bone broth is healthy, but show them how to make it, show them the recipes to use it, give them a meal plan, and really walk them through every step of the process. And so really that was kind of what drove me into the health field and what has really caused me to sort of teach the way I do today. That's really cool, man. That's a powerful story of, of real food. And I, I also like what you said about showing them how and kind of what and why all together, because it seems like there's a bit of bits and pieces from every every health person out there and you kind of left thinking, well, what do I do with all this stuff? And, uh, and the execution of like, okay, here's the meal plan. Here's what you need to be eating. Here's how you make it is powerful as well. Um, and so you started doing that in, is it Exodus Health is your R Right. Yeah. Practice? So I, I yeah, I started a clinic, uh, you know, right after, uh, right outside of school. It was about nine years ago. And, um, the clinic was called Exodus Health Center. And the idea just, I wanted to help set people free. And it, you know, grew to be one of the uh, largest natural health clinics uh, in the country. And then really started focusing a lot of my time online. You know, mm -hmm. I had a, I started writing <laughs> newsletters for patients. I posted them on a website and then started reading them, you know, and more and more people started reading them from all over. And so today I operate DrAx.com and, and have a lot of things there from healthy recipes to articles and, and, and that type of thing. Yeah, really cool stuff. Um, I'm, so I'm curious. I know you have your new book, Eat Dirt, coming out in uh, March. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, March 29th. Okay. So next month or this month, depending on when this is uh, posted. But what's been kind of your biggest lesson the past year, either putting that book together or something that sparked an aha moment in you? I know health can be a, a journey and you're always learning things. There's always new st stuff to, to learn. So that's uh, I'm curious for what your lesson was. Sure. Well, you know, one of the things I learned uh, a couple, a few years ago is, you know, I, I had practiced a lot of holistic and, and natural health, but hadn't studied a lot of Eastern medicine. And that's something I've really done today is study a lot of Chinese medicine. Mm. And the principles of Chinese medicine go back over 4,000 years. I mean, it's incredible what they've done. And so I... And so I've really started incorporating those principles into the book. In fact, one of the things I have in the book, Eat Dirt, is we have something called the gut type diet. I teach people how to eat right for their gut type. And I really believe not every single person's the same. I believe that there are, you know, different people respond differently to different foods. And so there's a quiz in my book that people can take where they can go and find their gut type. And there are five gut types. There's a toxic gut type, a stressed gut type, a candida gut type, a gastric gut type, and an immune gut type. So, for instance, like an immune gut type is for those with autoimmune disease and food sensitivities where their body is having a major immune reaction. And I really walk them through how to overcome those problems. But sort of jumping back, I think a lot of times uh, a lot of doctors today uh, – overcomplicate things for the patients or patients overcomplicate things for themselves. You know, I found that if I put a patient on a, 
you know, on, on a diet with mostly healthy crock pot recipes, just eating real food, man, their, their body will heal really fast. And so I think for me, um, realizing that, you know, people's bodies respond differently. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do need a more customized, personalized approach as I lay out in my book. Um, and also, it's just important to listen to, you know, for people to listen to their body, I think is important as well. But, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of what I lay out. It's very, very similar to paleo. You know, it's, um, you know, my only difference in philosophy would be, I think, some sprouted, slow-cooked grains um, on, on occasion are actually just fine. If you look at, you know, phytic acid is sort of the, the debate there, then, you know, nuts and seeds are out and so are a lot of other foods. So, but, but it's pretty darn close um, mm -hmm. to paleo what I teach. It's an ancient diet. Uh, essentially, is, uh, is is really what I'm I'm training people to do. Okay, uh, what else in like Chinese medicine then have you been researching that has really gotten you excited? Anything else? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, today when we look at disease, we've um, it's all based on. I wouldn't even say Greek medicine. It's very, very westernized. Whereas if you look at Chinese medicine, they're looking at certain things in the body, like what causes candida. And in, in, in American medicine, we would say, okay, well, or if you look at some of the candida diets out there, mm -hmm. we'll say, okay, we're going to treat candida by doing maybe green juices and um, fermented vegetables and things like that. Well, in Chinese medicine, they say, well, candida is caused by being too damp and too cold. Okay, so your body and your system are especially too damp and typically a little bit too cold. So in Chinese medicine, they'll say, well, we need to start consuming foods that are drying, that dry up the dampness, and that are warming to the body. So for instance, certain meats like bison and lamb, those are the most warming meats to the body. Certain herbs such as cinnamon, a tea mm. like Darko tea, um, ginger is very warming to the body. Mm. Um, staying away from ice cold drinks and cold smoothies for breakfast, those are some of the worst things for candida. And, and veggie juices actually aren't good for candida either. Mm. Um, doing foods that are very warming and also foods that nourish your, your pancreas and spleen in Chinese medicine. And those foods are actually going to include things like squashes. So a lot of times on a candida diet, people are taught no sugar whatsoever, no carbs, no grains, no sweet potatoes, no yams. Well, foods that nourish the spleen in Chinese medicine are fall foods such as pumpkin, butternut squash. And you don't want to go overboard with those, but have some of those in small amounts as well because those are nourishing those organs. So Chinese medicine really looks at things in terms of too dry, too damp, too cold, too hot too much movement and that's called wind or not enough movement and that's called stagnation. And so really there's just sort of these six hmm. key concepts and then actually it goes a little beyond that. But that's really what they're treating is, is those things with food uh, or acupuncture or, or lifestyle. And it's, uh, it's fascinating. And I think it's in, and for my clinical experience, it's actually the most effective way of treating people. Super fascinating. I haven't heard a lot of that. And um, it kind of reminds me. Yeah. I was just going to say, there's a great book that um, I think everybody should have. It's called Healing with Whole Foods by Paul Pitchford. And it really breaks down and simplifies all, all of the Chinese medicine recommendations for food and herbs. It, it's great. It's a great book. Yeah, because there's a lot out there. I know Chinese yeah. medicine is pretty dense. Uh, yep. But I love, I love different mindsets around health because uh, we can get kind of burnt out here and you know eat whole organic foods over and over and over again but when you get someone talking about like chinese medicine it gets the gears turning in your head or even raw food is to a certain extent like i learn a lot from other people who are outside the small real food kind of paleo-ish community and uh so the chinese medicine is fascinating i'll have to look into that yeah so um okay so eat dirt um it's about uh well actually i'll let you kind of sure. explain what it's about yeah, so so you know, eating dirt, it's it's not necessarily about, you know, what 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 the name would initially imply, like going out in your backyard and scooping up dirt and eating it. But there actually uh, dirt is lacking in our diet. And I really kind of go through a few th few things in the book before I get into this gut type diet for people, this customized approach, but it's we've waged we've waged a war on germs and dirt and it's backfired. You know, it's not that we don't want to practice proper sanitation because we do, but we have swung the pendulum too far in the other direction. And we live in this age of antibiotics today. And if you look at the number one cause of what I teach people to heal in my book, which is leaky gut, um, 
leaky gut, the number one cause of that today is the overuse of prescription antibiotics. I know that I was bombarded as a kid and created uh, health issues for me, uh, you know, later on that I, you know, eventually recovered from. But, you know, antibiotics are the word, you know, hand sanitizers are full of uh, antibiotics. Hmm. Uh, fluoride and chlorine in our drinking water, those are antibacteria. They kill off the good bacteria in our gut. The pesticides and the GMOs today have antibacterial properties. Artificial sweeteners, such as sucralose, Splenda, uh, NutraSweet, and aspartame. You know, those kill off good bacteria in the gut. Our personal care products and shampoos, I could go on and on and on. These are chemicals that destroy and decimate the good bacteria in our gut. And so we need to start repopulating and replenishing uh, our microbiome, which is made up of uh, trillions and trillions of different types of microorganisms. And we want more diversity. There is a really, uh, a really, uh, fantastic uh, study uh, that was done here recently where they went and actually uh, studied a tribe called the Yanomami tribe. And this is a tribe um, that they went and they, they looked at their daily life. They also did fecal uh, uh, stool samples on them. And they found that they had the highest diversity of, of uh, microbes and probiotics uh, of, any, of any, anyone that's ever been studied. And this mm. was, a, was a community that's been completely isolated. Uh, and they had fantastic health, you know, you know, beautiful teeth and gums and very active and fit. And they looked at what their diet was and, you know, their diet consisted of um, eating uh, wild venison, eating wild fish, eating insects like crickets. Uh, they consumed um, a banana. They consumed a fermented cassava drink, like a, you know, not kombucha, but again, a fer- fermented cassava drink. They did, of course, uh, wild, you know, wild plants, but they, they lived as true uh, you know, hunter gatherers are very, very similar to what we'd call, um, you know, a, a paleo diet. But the other thing they noticed when they were studying this tribe is when they were eating, a lot of times there, there was dirt on their food. You know, they were getting dirt mm-hmm. on their food. And the, the researchers said they have the high, they actually have almost 50% more bacteria in their guts and diversity than we do. I mean, that's a whole lot more. And they found that that's what was protecting their bodies. That was why they had such incredible health, but they said that a big reason was is because they literally ate dirt. <clears throat> and there is our, our types of microorganisms in our soil, such as Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus coagulans, Bacillus clausi. These are known as spore-type probiotics or soil-based probiotics. And these types of probiotics are, I call them the king of probiotics. You know, a lot of us get these food-based probiotics today, yeah. such as lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, but we're missing out on the species such as uh, you know, Acinobacterium and the Bacillus species and some of the others that are found in our soil today. And there are so many studies proving that we should be eating dirt. Hmm. Um, if, if you look at, uh, there's a study done um, in, uh, in, in the uh, in, in a Journal of, uh, of Environmental and Allergens, and they actually found that if you have a pet, you have a stronger immune system. Actually, those with cats had a 48% stronger immune system. Those with dogs, a 52% less incidence of allergies and asthma. And the reason is, is you're getting those constant exposure to the pollen that they bring in and different microbes and, and all of these different things. Yeah. And so in the book, Eat Dirt, Eat Dirt doesn't mean you go out and scoop up a uh, you know dirt and eat it. But one example of this would be you go to your local farmer's market today, and if you buy carrots, even if you wash them off lightly, you'll notice that the, the carrots aren't like this glistening hot orange. They've got these little brown specks embedded in the carrot. Well, there is a study showing that those brown specks, those soil-based probiotics, actually help your body breaking down polysaccharides and carbohydrates and actually help you digest that food hmm. versus, you know, you go to your local supermarket today, buy those baby carrots that are like shining, glistening. They've been sprayed with a chemical solution. Those will kill off probiotics versus the real stuff is getting you those good micro exposures. And, and this, is, this is true immunization today. You know, a lot of people turn to vaccines. Well, nature has natural immunizations. Honey, for instance, raw local honey. And again, the, the local thing is actually important here, but raw local honey contains over 200 microbes that actually take play, uh, some of them will take residence in your system. So when allergy season rolls around, your body's protected. So, so eating dirt wow. is shopping at your local farmer's market. Eating dirt is eating raw local honey. It's walking barefoot on the ground or grounding or earthing. It's swimming in the ocean. In fact, the ocean doesn't contain just good bacteria. It contains good viruses called bacteriophages or phages, which, uh, you know, you wonder why when you get in the water, your skin looks so amazing. I mean, the salt is some of it, but 
these bacteriophages are incredible for your health. Um, and, and, you know, and, and there, there are many other things, too, that really help boost the microbes in your system from medicinal mushrooms, spirulina, chlorella aren't really algae. They're actually called cyanobacteria. Um, and we don't just need bacteria. We need good funguses, viruses, yeasts. We need it all. So, wow. again, and eat dirt. <laughs> I really go through a practical way to repopulate the gut microbiome, heal leaky gut, which is the root cause of all disease, and then really help people determine their exact gut type uh, and one of five plans just for them. Awesome information. I mean, that was, there was a lot in there. But one thing that I, I kind of had an aha moment when you're talking is uh, a lot of times with the gut, we hear it in a terms of uh, quantity. You know, you got to repopulate the gut. And I think, OK, numbers, my numbers are low and I got to get the good bacteria numbers up. Uh, but you said, you know, there's different kinds and strains of bacteria and that even if you're eating probiotics, you might only be getting two or three of those if that's your dominant source of it. So sometimes it's not a and you can correct me if I'm off here, but not a numbers game. And sometimes it's 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 a diversity game as well. Yeah, a- absolutely. And if you look at certain tests out there today, whether it's 23andMe or, or you biome is another good example. I mean, you know, sometimes they're testing the total amount, but really, really the diversity is, is probably more important. Okay. And how do you, how do you get that diversity? Is that what you're going over in the book and focusing uh, on? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, it's a combination of things, but it's, it's these micro exposure. It's, it's, you know, it's a combination of food, but then things you can't get from food. You know, there, there's these other exposures that we have and that, that, that I think are important. But, you know, the, the biggest reasons that we have this lack of diversity, number one is the overuse of antibiotics. Number two is being inside all the time, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, we used to sleep out on the ground and, and, and uh, people were working. I mean, you look at the percent of people that were farmers, what is it, 100 years ago, like 60%. Today, it's less than 2%. I mean, it's just we've really lost touch with the earth. And it's an important part of, uh, you know, of who we are. I mean, if you look at different, um, you know, religious texts, and, and, and I, I believe that we, we, you know, actually the three largest world religions all say we came from dust and mud. You know, we're meant to be connected to this earth we live in. If we're not connected to the microbes and the things in our in our area, it actually weakens our immunity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess with the weakening your immunity, what happens when our gut is kind of out of balance for the person listening? What might they be feeling or, or what's the, I guess, end game if their gut is just not working properly? Yeah, great question. Well, typically, you know, what, what doctors and scientists today, you'll, you'll see the term or hear the term, it's called dysbiosis, which essentially means it's an imbalance of good species of uh, microbes or good bacteria versus an overgrowth of, of bad bacteria or pathogenic yeast and parasites and things like that. So really the good keeps the bad in, in balance. And when we say bad, the truth is it's It may not be bad. It might be just overgrowth. Like, for instance, it's pretty incredible that candida isn't necessarily – candida in the right amounts is good for you. E. coli in the right amounts in Mm. your body, you need it. But but it's this imbalance that happens. So if somebody's consuming a – well, yeah, I'll tell them – I'll tell everybody what gets it off, but let me then explain what your question is, sure. what, ha- what happens essentially. Well, when you have too much candida in your system or too much types of a bac- bac- bacteria, you know, bacteria are always producing things. Some of these bacteria will actually produce certain toxins that will eat away at the gut lining, uh, causing leaky gut. And what leaky gut is, it's, it's when the holes of your intestines uh, uh, open up Uh, what are called gates or tight junctions and things can enter into your bloodstream that should never ever enter into the bloodstream. Gluten, let's use that as an example. You're consuming a lot of gluten over time. You don't have enough good probiotics that are producing enzymes that can help break down and and digest that food you're eating. What happens is that's going to cause inflammation of the gut lining. Over time, imagine you have a, a fishing net, you get a big hole in it. Now the, you know, large undigested food particles are getting into your bloodstream. Once they're in the bloodstream, your body says, hey, this should not be happening. It starts an inflammatory and an immune reaction. And if that immune react, and so that, that may cause mm. a symptom of uh, inflammation such as joint pain or fatigue or um, you know skin issues. It, a number of those things can happen. Food sensitivities are a big one. You have food sensitivities. That's 
That's dysbiosis. That's leaky gut. That's happening in your system. So it sounds like when those food particles then are, are getting through that fish net, as you described, um, I know your body starts attacking them, and that can be problematic in and of itself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and this is really where food sensitivities come into play. Uh, as we talked about, it can cause lack of energy. Um, you know, adrenal fatigue, a number of issues. But if it's not corrected over time, it will really lead to autoimmune disease to where your body then not, not only starts attacking, um, you know, the toxins and bacteria and, and undigested food particles, it'll actually start uh, attacking even healthy things hmm. and can lead to Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, and a number of other health problems. Okay. Um, so it's important then obviously to heal the gut and you outline that in your book i'm assuming um what are kind of what what are kind of some of the first steps you do in healing the gut that's kind of a a buzzword these days um but uh, i I guess i'll let you walk through it how do you heal the gut right well i I would say there are several steps involved number one is you know you want to start healing eating gut healing foods and some of those top foods would include uh, fermented foods such as uh, kefir. You know, goat's milk kefir, you buy it at your local farmer's market. I know some people aren't a fan of dairy. I'm not a fan of, of most dairy, but I think, again, raw uh, fermented goat's milk uh, can tend to be really good. In fact, my mom, when she was sick, uh, she, when she struggled with her constipation so bad, we, we d- drove an hour out in the country, picked up this raw fermented goat's milk. She started consuming it, really did some amazing things for her digestive system. So I'd say um, cultured foods, um, a sauerkraut, kimchi, miso soup, um, coconut kefir, those are all some great things to add in. Um, along with that, I would say bone broth is up there. You know, bone broth, I know people talk about it all the time. They contain the amino acids, proline, glycine, uh, you know, glutamine, um, arginine. Uh, all of these amino acids are important for repairing the gut lining, especially proline and especially glutamine. And, um, and, and chicken broth is, is probably one of the best. Beef broth is, is, is the next best after that. Actually, this is pretty interesting. I know that there, uh, you know, there are going to be some new products coming out here in the future, such as bone broth powder or coll- different types of collagen. A lot of times when people are buying a collagen supplement today, it actually only has, it's, it's primarily made of just beef collagen, hmm. which has type 1 and 3 collagen. But chicken collagen has type 2 collagen, probably the best for your joints and one of the best for your gut. And then there's also fish collagen and, and actually collagen inside of the eggshell. And all of those together have type 1, 2, 3, 5, and 10 collagen. So I recommend people look for a collagen supplement that has all five types of those collagen in it. That way there's, they're supporting all of those different tissues. So again, beef broth is great. If you're going to do broth, but again, beef and but and chicken, you're going to want to do both. And then actually, fish collagen is one of the best and pro- probably the best overall. Now, most people don't love the taste, but uh, fish collagen more than any other collagen causes your body to start produce its own uh, collagen, uh, w- hmm. which is which is pretty incredible. How do they make that? The fish collagen, uh, fish bones and head. You know, they they take the meat off, and yeah. and what, what's not left of the meat is they boil just like you would, or you know, or slow cook. Yeah. Um, over several days um, and, and create fish. fish uh, you know, I've bought it off vital, vitalchoice.com. But again, um, I know that I have a, a collagen supplement coming out here that actually has all five types, which a lot of them don't. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I've done you know, salmon and halibut broth is what you can look up online. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I know with healing the gut, a lot of it comes down to what you're doing, kind of what we went over. But a lot of it also comes down to what you're not doing and what you're avoiding. And you mentioned uh, antibiotics and kind of the war on germs. Um, anything else you want to say on that? Just how that messes up the, the gut microbiome and dive into sure. that a little more? Yeah. L- let me talk to you about a couple more foods to eat and then I'll touch on the foods again to stay away from. But I, the other thing I would say is make, make the crock pot your best friend. If you hmm. really want to heal leaky gut and overcome any, any health issue. In fact, in, in Chinese medicine, they've been doing the crock pot for years. They call it one pot. And hmm. they believe in the principles of food combining where a lot of times eating 
a lot of different foods or let's say a protein and a starch together is sometimes a little bit harder to digest. And so what they do is for, 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 uh, for thousands of years, they've put all food together in a pot, let it cook over you know, two to four days. And they believe that those enzymes and those foods essentially become one and it becomes easier for your body to digest. And mm-hmm. I, I've really experimented with that myself. And I really believe putting things in a crock pot does make them easier to digest. I mean, one, they are cooked over a long period of time. But again, your body's sort of getting all of this substance that's been sort of, uh, you know, wired together as one. But, you know, doing crock pot, pretty much following a diet that's a lot of uh, organic meat and veggies in the crock pot, I think, you know, in bone broth, that's the ideal meal to follow I mean, if you're going to heal. And, um, and that's how I would start. Um, so in terms of foods and things to stay away from, gluten is an issue. You know, conventional cow's milk is definitely an issue with the casein and lactose. Um, very hard to digest. Any type of refined grain. You know, again, I, people can actually heal from leaky gut and do some grains, but but it's not. But but grains would be a very small amount of the diet, and if they cook it, it should be uh, made into what's called a kanji. So in Chinese medicine, you might do rice uh, or a sprouted rice. But you put sprouted rice in the crock pot to where it is, it is literally, it's mushy goop. So everything has sort of been broken down and, and digested. So, you know, sometimes those are included. But for the most part, grains you'd want to stay away from. Um, as I mentioned, personal care products, fluoride and chlorine in your drinking water. You definitely want to get a filter for, the, for, for your drinking water, water without a doubt. And what, what I have my patients do, I have them replace their cleaning products and personal care products with essential oils. In fact, I've got a free essential oils guide on my website. If people go to drax.com, that's D-R-A-X-E.com, you can look up my, I have an essential oils guide hmm. and I have a free book I give away, a free essential oils book going over you know, the, the benefits of lavender oil for your skin and healing cuts and burns and um, you know, frankincense oil for reducing inflammation and for chamomile and ginger oil for healing the gut and that type of thing. But I think you know essential oils are a great thing to replace those things with. But again, in general, it's sugar, hydrogenated oils, packaged foods. I mean, we obviously want to be eating whole real foods. It's, it's the basic stuff that everybody knows. But the other thing I do in the book is really lay out based on the gut type. So for instance, you know, somebody with a toxic gut type should be doing a lot more green and sprouted foods and sour foods. Uh, different foods, flavors have different properties in Chinese medicine. Sour foods nourish the liver and gallbladder. So uh, think like a green sour apple. That's nourishing to the, uh, to, to, to the liver and gallbladder. So if you have toxicity, you'd want to do more sour foods. If you have an issue, let's say um, an immune-related issue, immunity in Chinese medicine is related to the lungs and the colon. You want to consume a lot of white foods or foods that have what's called a, um, a, a pungent flavor. Um, so foods that are white, so uh, cauliflower is fantastic for the lungs and colon. Garlic and onions and that pungent flavor are great for cleansing the colon and, and healing the lungs um, and, and different things like that. And actually based on the gut types are all of these different foods that people should be focusing on um, for, for that very reason. So again, I think part of it just determines on, on the person's you know, specific gut type or in, in Chinese medicine, they call it your element type. Like okay. what five element are you? Yeah. Yeah, fascinating. Um, so with, you know, the personal care products, then what about hand sanitizers? Everyone's got that in their yeah. office and they're lathering it on. Hospitals got it. What's your take on hand sanitizers? Well, you know, hand sanitizers are terrible. You know, the antibiotics, especially triclosan. Triclosan has been shown to damage the liver, the kidneys, um, kill probiotics in your gut. So staying away from hand sanitizer is an absolute must. I have my patients make their own at-home sanitizer uh, just using aloe vera and essential oils. Typically, aloe vera Hmm. uh, mixed with tea tree oil Uh is, is a perfect one. And you could probably even go online and do a Google search for tea tree oil hand sanitizer and that's what i'd personally use and so you 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 mix the aloe vera uh water or gel uh it'd be gel you'd want to do the gel and then you 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 put some tea tree in there and that has kind of a um yeah yeah, that's it in fact i've got a recipe for it on my website you could go to drx.com and and click on my i have a natural remedies tab diy recipes and Mm -hmm. i've got over 50 diy recipes uh, teaching people how to make their own homemade deodorant and shampoos and all this type of stuff with essential oils so uh soap's a big one because i think we're talking to john durant on here and he has a, a skin 
care soap thing and i was i was concerned because uh, i mean i mean uh when you you know need to wash your hands and you're not using the antibiotic soap what do you use and how does that work and is it as good well, well the truth is you know 99 99- Point nine percent of bacteria we come in contact with really isn't dangerous or harmful. In fact, there, there was a <laughs> everyone should check out this article. There was a, there was a study done in New York, and they did a study on the New York subway to see how many of those germs were dangerous to someone's health, and pretty much none of them. In fact, the one guy said you should roll around your kids in the New York subway if you want to boost their immunity, which I think was going a little overboard. But that that to be said, I mean, hot, warm water. I mean, warm water does the trick with most things. If you want something that's antibacterial, you use things that are plant-based. Again, uh, tea tree oil, um, uh, myrrh oil, cinnamon oil, lavender. Actually, is lavender is antibacterial as well. So just you know, a little bit of what I do is I actually have essential oils, and and I have a hand soap recipe using lemon oil and tea tree oil. Um, and you just you know you, you replace your you, you can make it home at home yourself. But even when I'm traveling, my wife and I, we just bring straight lavender oil or tea tree oil and mm-hmm. if we use a public restroom we just do that on our hands wash it off with water and that's 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 what we use huh okay that's not simple uh, you'd think oh, yeah. it was more complex because soap recipes are nuts yeah 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 this is this is and it's not going to foam up which maybe the foam makes people feel good it's it's really not um but but you know it's really not necessary i heard that's the case with uh shampoo they actually put chemicals in there to make it foam so yes. that's what people think it's working Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So the personal care is important then. Um, what supplementation is a big one with, uh, I know with leaky guts, not everything, but it definitely can help. What are your thoughts on, on supplementing to kind of heal the gut? Yeah, I would say the most important things to consume. Number one, look for a bone broth protein powder or a collagen protein powder, as I mentioned earlier. And, and of course, you want to do the real thing. You want to be getting bone broth in your diet every day. But doing a collagen protein supplement, three tablespoons in a morning smoothie is a great thing to do. Number two, uh, get some L-glutamine. You know, I think L-glutamine is great. Um, I would say probiotics are really important, and I would look for a soil-based probiotic or a certified organic probiotic. Uh, so, but you want to be getting probiotics. That is an absolute. Um, if you really are having major digestive issues, gas and bloating, IBS, and you know any of the basic gas, bloating, and indigestion, anything like that, digestive enzymes can really help. So, I would look for a good organic digestive enzyme supplement, and. Um, you know, uh, you know, the other thing would be uh, some essential oils can help. Frankincense essential oil is really good for the body, diffusing that in your home. Hmm. Um, it contains a lot of anti-inflammatory compounds, which are good. But overall, I think those are the best. And if people want more details, I've got an article on my website titled Four Steps to Heal Leaky Gut. And so if you or if you just do a Google search online for Dr. Axe Leaky Gut, you'll find my article and it goes through the exact steps, the best foods, the best supplements uh, and everything there on what people need to need to follow. OK, I was listening to Paul Check once talk about uh, soil health, and he said that in a, a spoonful of soil, healthy organic soil, there's more. Uh, microorganisms than there are people in the planet in just a tablespoon of, of soil. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's 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 incredible. That's amazing. Yeah, so stuff. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so soil based live probiotics are important, and look for species like Bacillus subtilis in the in the formula or Bacillus clausi. Okay, um, I know we're coming up on time, but one thing I had to ask you about, and I went to your website, checked it out, great stuff, and the number one article on there was tilapia worse than bacon. Um, can you is is uh can you kind of give us yeah. an overview on on tilapia and why it's worse than bacon? Well, yeah, it's one of the most toxic farm-raised fish there today. Uh, you know, farm-raised fish essentially are swimming in their own own feces all day, and there's a study done showing that these farm-raised fish, the dioxin levels and the PCBs and parabens and the chemicals in them, it's really high. And their omega-3 level is pretty much almost, you know, it, it drops down by like 90% if it's farm-raised versus wild-caught. So huh. there's really no good tilapia today. And and by the way, when I put that out there, I was quoting a, a, a medical doctor and researcher from Wake Forest University. And he actually said in, the art, in, in his research, he said, tilapia could be worse for you than hamburger bacon is what he said. It was, it was, and, and so in general, now if we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, 
pork today, which I'm not really a fan of uh, actually eating. I, I don't eat any pork um, because I believe they're car- carriers of parasites, yeah, even even the healthier ones. Um, but in general, I think that um, they're both terrible. But you know, farm raised fish, they are. They are toxic. I grew up in Ohio, and they had fish farms not far from where I'm at. And you want to talk about a a dirty, huh. uh, toxic, horrible environment. So when I'm when I'm buying fish today, it, it's wild caught salmon uh, all the way. Yeah. Um, and so is tilapia always farmed, or is it why does it exist in the yeah, wild? Yeah. I, I mean, it's of course there there is wild somewhere, but with what with our supply today in the U.S., I I don't know of a a, a non. Um, Farm raised supply. It's all farm raised. Okay. Uh, for the for the most part. So I think staying away from tilapia and, and you know tilapia is not that great tasting of fish anyways. I mean, do salmon or cod or halibut or mahi mahi or sole or sea bass or something else. Again, I, I buy my my wild caught seafood from Vital Choice and get it shipped right to my home. And their their sockeye and king salmon is amazing. Their their cod is great. So I I I'd, I'd buy fish from there instead. Okay. Um. Last question before we kind of wrap it up. I, this went by fast. That was a ton of information, really good stuff. But I like to ask uh, my guests, you know, anything that's going to be underrated. So five years ago, we were kind of just starting to talk about gluten and now it's kind of mainstream. And you could argue that with organic 10 years ago or whenever. Um, is there anything now that's kind of up and coming you see that we're going to be uh, talking about in the mainstream in five years, two years even? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll mention several things, and a lot of them I already mentioned here on the show. I think that bone broth, essential oils, I think um, are, are going to continue to grow. And then I think wild foods. I mean, you know, these are kind of, they're bigger in the paleo community, but things like uh, consuming liver, you know, uh, like chicken and beef liver in supplement form. Okay. I think, I mean, they're, 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 these things are around, but I think they're really going to continue to grow. So I think bone broth um, in powder form is a great supplement using essential oils for everything. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's plant-based medicine. It's amazing. It's essential oils are referenced more than 300 times in the Bible. They're used in Chinese medicine, Egyptian medicine, Greek medicine, Hippocrates used them, and they're just now really becoming hmm. popular again. So I think that that's a, you know, that's that's another um, huge thing. So yeah, and then you know eating wild foods. I think manuka honey is going to become more popular uh, in terms of a uh, of, of food that's out there. Um, and uh, I want to let everybody know about something else um, uh, too. I, I mentioned leaky gut quite a bit. If you, if somebody wants to take my leaky gut quiz uh, right now until the book launches, I have a free quiz online. It's called isyourgutleaking.com. So you can go to the website, isyourgutleaking.com, and I have a quiz there, and you can find out um, basically how se- if you have leaky gut, how severe it is, and that type of thing if you go to that website um, there as well. But um, but yeah, I'd say those are some of the bigger things that I think we're going to be seeing, uh, seeing more of. And then, of course, uh, and then soil-based probiotics. I think that those mm. types of probiotics are going to be popular as well. So if you want to be doing it before it was cool, uh, <laughs> take – Dr. Josh's advice and uh, get on the soil based probiotics and essential oils. Um, well, great stuff. So, Eat Dirt is coming out in March. Uh, what's the actual date? Yeah, well, it's, it's the end of March here, uh, March 29th, but the book is already available for pre-sales, and we're only doing this till March 29th, but um, we actually, if people get the book before it's released and go to Amazon.com and buy Eat Dirt, uh-huh. we're actually sending a load of, bo- we have got a ton of bonuses from uh, a free cookbook and a number of things that people can get um, if they, uh, actually, if they get the book now. Cool. So they can go over to Amazon and pre-order it. That's the place to go? Exactly. Yeah. Go to Amazon or go to isyourgutleaking.com, take the quiz, and then uh, there's an opportunity then to get the book. And they have, we have all the free bonuses uh, with there. And you might just look up Eat Dirt Book on Google yeah. and uh, some stuff might come up there too. Okay. And then you have your own podcast, right? On uh, iTunes. Yeah. People can check out my podcast just searching the, you know, Dr. Axe on, on, uh, on iTunes. And where should they start? You got a lot of episodes. Is there one that the, they should start on? Oh, let's see here. Um, you know, if people want to sort of stick in the uh, you know paleo van, I, I did a great interview with uh, Diane Sanfilippo, um, who wrote Practical Paleo. I think you know that's uh, that, that that was a great one. Sarah Gottfried, uh, really going through hormones, which I think was a fantastic interview. So those those are a couple. Okay, well, great stuff, Doctor Josh. Thanks for coming on, man. 
Hey, thanks for having me, Clark. I'm a big fan of your show and uh, Paleo Hacks. And uh, yeah, th- thanks for having me. Awesome. Till next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Mission accomplished. That is this week's show. Really good stuff. I'm excited to dive into Eat Dirt when that comes out. Fascinating about the gut microbiome. That always trips me out. I always, I always learn things when we're talking about the gut. I feel like that's a buzzword in this day and age, especially in the health community. People are talking about healing your gut. And I really like what Dr. Ash said about the crock pot because uh, the, the two biggest excuses in health are, what do you think? What do you think they are? It's one, I don't have the time, right? And the second is, I don't have the money. I can't afford it. And both those might actually be really valid. You know, you might be working 50 hours a week or have kids you have to take care of to and from school or life gets in the way. I get it. And the money thing, obviously, I mean, uh, health is health can be expensive. It's an investment. But the crock pot comes in because it kind of takes both those and throws them out the window because you can set it and forget it with the crock pot. Um, and I'm not selling anything here. I'm, I just, I'm a huge fan of it. And I just want to kind of emphasize it at the end here that like crock pot meals, I mean, you can really turn it on and come back eight hours later and it's ready for you to eat. It's kind of a eight hour version of a microwave, except way healthier. Paleohacks.com is the place to go for recipes, articles, and more. I think we do have some crock pot recipes over there. And if you want to get a hold of me, let me know what you thought about this show. Uh, you can go over to clarkdanger.com or just shoot me an email, clark at clarkdanger.com. Weekly Wednesday Health Hacks coming to you on the YouTube channel. Be sure you're on that. And until next time, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next Thursday.